<laughs> all right guys <laughs> okay where have we got brilliant it is working <laughs> yep yep good hey everyone good evening hi uh, okay oh there's loads of people thanks very much um, can everyone here and see us chat away yeah just pop in the chat but if um if somebody can just tell us that they can hear everything's us. fine and i'm just gonna be rude and check instagram and facebook because always when i get off of this i look and then there's like 10 people going i can't get on the chat or something like that oh lauren abba brilliant okay perfect amazing it's always nice to know that <laughs> we can be heard and we're not just, um, yeah, yeah. Like faces with our mouths moving and no sound. And so far, no one's saying they can't get on. Cool. So now we need to give you some pearls of wisdom. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. We've had a whole weekend off with work, so we should be kind of like invigorated and ready for this. Absolutely. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off with um, giving you some kind of pearls on planning, staying positive with planning. What well, you should be planning still, um, I'm submitting people, um, and yeah, and like just keeping happy during this time, even though it's really uncertain and we totally get that. Um, and then we'll go into your questions. If you have any other questions, just chuck them in the chat. Um, and actually, I'm going to hand over to you because I feel like I'm getting my sentences out very well. Yeah, do you know what? I literally, um, you might have to finish mine because now we're not, not really talking to people all that much, are we? Not as much as we yeah. are, like when we're out and about and that kind of thing. And by, there's a part of my brain which isn't quite. Yeah, we're not kind of engaged because it, it, all the chat's been about postponing and dates and things like that, that actually like the creative side almost starts to kind of like go, which is why it's so good for us to do this and kind of encourage you guys as well to still be creative mm. and still plan and still do all of that because it is fun. And I miss it. Like, I really miss inspiration sessions. Like, I miss just being creative. I miss talking to people about the fun stuff. So that's really why we kind of wanted to make sure that you guys carry that on as well. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely. Yeah. It's so fun, isn't it, when you're kind of planning and the bit that I love, absolutely love it, is um, venue visits. I absolutely love going for venue visits, yeah, with my couples because you just feel them like, you know, as things start to come together. Yeah, and it's a bit of fun. Nice. yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, and that's, uh, I think I've done most... I tend to do them February and uh, March. I've done most of them for this year anyway, whether those weddings happen this year or not. But there's a few for next year which kind of have to be on hold for a bit. So um, there's quite a few venues doing uh, virtual tours. Yeah. Aren't there? Kind of walk around and um, so yeah, make the most of that. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. I think there's loads of venues now um, that are starting to pull together very rough videos sometimes. Sometimes they've already got them and they're great. Um, some of them have got like those 360 tours. But if mm. you are feeling like you're getting a little bit kind of just a bit down in the dumps and you need that excitement again, most of the times you will get that from like your final planning meeting at your venue or something like that, which could have been coming up really soon. Don't worry just contact them see if they're doing a virtual tour see if they've got a few videos on their phones even anything along those lines that you can watch and get excited again and start to picture your day because it does always happen at the venue yeah yeah it's always so, i realized today that um i am probably going to have a wedding season without peonies this year um because all my may and june weddings of most of them have I've moved um, and they're like symbol of the wedding season, right? Peonies being everywhere. And, I have uh, you did. Yeah. Yeah. Of Definitely. But there is a way around that though. Um, and that is faux. If you go mm. to someone who is extremely good, so say you had your wedding in May and it's now kind of October time and pings were your thing because they were definitely my thing. Um, 
then please look at a very good bow florist and they will have some amazing peonies. Um, and it might be that you incorporate them just in a few places if you want to have that kind of token nod to your original flowers or anything along those lines. Um, mm. Please have a look at a good bow, bow florist. They are not any cheaper than fresh. That is a question I get all the time. Cr crap faux ones are. Oh, yeah. Decent ones are not. And there's uh, a difference. Yeah, there is a difference. Yeah, go for the high end ones, otherwise you'll see it. Um, but um, yeah, no, really good faux ones. You can't tell, can you? So um, yeah, so, yeah, that's an option. I start having a look at faux um, flowers. They're definitely an option. But I think our overall message, really, when it comes to planning your wedding right now even though it probably feels pretty shit, um, is to keep things light, mm -hmm. keep things fun, and keep mm -hmm. things kind of like creative, I think is a good way of putting it. Um, not to get bogged down in the heavy stuff. So we were just talking about this before, like the worst things that we think anyone should be doing with their planning right now is table plans, and doing your final orders for your food. Major order, don't do it. Don't yeah. do it. <laughs> no. <laughs> like that is They're the worst part of things, like anyway. Um, you know, of planning anyway, aren't they really? But um, but yeah, definitely not right. I'll do all the fun stuff. Um, and keep yourselves inspired. And, yeah, um, keep it pretty. Mhm, mm mhm. Mm Try and avoid the stuff that involves guests and names um because obviously so much is is going to change isn't it yeah i think that's the thing like you want to do the things that you're enjoying and i don't think any of us ever really enjoyed doing our table plan um especially if there's any family politics as well um mm -hmm. to follow one stick with your bridesmaids and your groomsmen mm -hmm. the best thing ever um and <laughs> Yeah, and just try and keep it light and really, really fun. There are, there is always going to be time for the heavy stuff, right? Like, oh yeah, we're well, going to have to get round to it. You can't ignore it. But now is not the time, isn't it? Now is not, yeah. now is not the time. Do all the fun stuff. <laughs> so there's loads of stuff um, on a lot of the wedding blogs at the moment, isn't there? They're really, really, God love them. Really trying to keep things really positive and keep inspiring everybody. So don't stop looking at the blogs and if there's a particular magazine that you're like unfortunately most stuff is going digital um most wedding media is going digital now but if there are any um actual print magazines that you like quite a few of them are doing like mail orders and, and that kind of thing so um yeah so try and um keep up with uh with things like that and, and yeah keep up with the things you enjoy mm. and pinterest Pinterest is great if you've got kind of things to decide on things like your table designs and that kind of thing Pinterest um, is great so and it kind of is um, uh, most of the time it's annoying because it's a rabbit hole and people just go deeper and deeper and deeper but actually now for a bit of escapism and like shoving yourself into a wedding world Pinterest is great yeah and it doesn't matter how long you spend on it right now <laughs> you could just look nope. an hour and it's fine. <laughs> We're not rushing off for anything. <laughs> okay. The thing that's the thing, isn't it? Just keep on looking at the things that inspire you. Keep on enjoying the wedding process. Keep on looking at the pretty stuff. Um, mm -hmm. making sure that you are like just taking it for what it is and not stressing too much about the hard stuff right now because that's not gonna do you any good. Um, and that's what you need to be careful of here, right? Is that you look after yourself in this process. Um, so, yeah. So keeping things fun, ordering things. I've got my notes here, by the way, if I keep on looking away. That's why I'm like... Um, <laughs> ordering things is the best. Um, um, so we're saying earlier about like looking on Etsy and going down that rabbit hole as well. Um, mm. If you need things, little things that you might not have thought of. So guest book and guess but pens don't forget those yeah <laughs> that's like nina's one of nina's top tips <laughs> don't forget a pen yeah. i how made sure people... i matched like this is how ocd i was like <laughs> I had... i'm sorry guys like i had the gold pens <laughs> to match the cream and gold guest book that was from kate's bag like 
everything wet. <laughs> <laughs> and it might have also been a Kate Spade pen pot that I still use to this day, but that's a whole other level, okay? <laughs> like I just Kate Spade up my whole guest book. Um, <laughs> Um, but these are the little things that you can start thinking about because you've got time to do it and you've got the headspace to do it because you're physically parking all the big stuff for now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and time was not mixed up stuff. places I've got sales on, haven't they, at the moment? They're really trying to keep like e commerce and stuff going, like to help the um, economy. So, all that stuff, they might not ship it right now, um, but you can definitely still buy stuff, and there is loads of sales on. So, definitely. Um, yeah just whatever you're looking for just keep um going especially kind of like high street retailers they've got some really good sales on yeah they have definitely the high streets have got really sales on but also don't forget to support small um yes. so there are a lot of small independent businesses right now who are struggling and scared and if there is an option where you could um order something which may be slightly more expensive, like you might have to pay postage on it, whereas it could be free on Amazon or something like that. Um, maybe go small at the moment because you could really be making a huge, huge difference um, to those independent businesses. Um, so it might be something small. And there's a lot of, which I am actually going to do this week as well, there's a lot of um, wedding cake makers who are um, kind of, popping out cakes in the post so it might be like a, a, a mixed um box it might be cake jars all those kind of things so if your cake maker is doing that then that is a really nice way of um supporting them yeah. at the moment and you get an amazing cake way better than anything you can get like tesco way better than anything you can make yes <laughs> failed failed miserably look this weekend last weekend and then had to eat the whole thing between us oh it was a bit of a brick oh, <laughs> bad, wasting it so, you know what yeah, I'm, just gonna pop, I'm just gonna pop a light on excuse it's me it's going down now so it's going dark um so oh. supporting small and buying things that you might not have thought of buying now basically so all the little things that you think actually that would have been done kind of a month before get it now um start enjoying that process you've got time to really research it the bigger brands are putting sales on so you might get it cheaper or you might wish to kind of support small um, and pay maybe a little bit more to keep an independent business going right now, which obviously as independent businesses, we are all for. It is, doesn't it? I mean, there's lots of bigger things which smalls and independents might not necessarily do, but things like gifts for your wedding party, um, jewellery, all those kind of things usually better from independents. Um, to be honest so all those kind of like little um little bits and pieces are where kind of independents come into their own and they're usually much more unique yeah that's the thing isn't it um so as well as that really want to oh yeah um diy do it yourself guys you've got time there are so many workshops on at the moment to help people like <laughs> again all small independent businesses are putting their stuff online um mm. so there are plenty of workshops going on at the moment um calligraphy that's a big one like there's a lot of calligraphy workshops um yeah. online that you could do which you could then obviously put your hand to your place names or Maybe even if you're having to redo your invites, um, you could do something along those lines. Um, it's a time to be kind of creative and it gives you, again, a nice outlet. And it's not a heavy job. It's something you just take yourself away, switch your phone off, switch the TV off, do not listen to any more news. Um, and just get in the moment and just learn something new. Yeah, it's really therapeutic, calligraphy. Yeah. And you were talking about forests, weren't you? Yeah, so loads of florists that I know are doing like a drop off service. So they'll drop you off like um, not a ready made, well, you can get a ready made bouquet if you wanted, if you just wanted flowers, but they're dropping you off like bunches of like flowers that are just stems. And then you can either create a, uh, an arrangement yourself or as well, on top of the drop off service, they're also doing an online workshop. So everybody will kind of put together their arrangements themselves and the florist will talk you 
through it so if your wedding florist is doing that um that's a really nice thing to do to support them but there are other florists um who are doing those kind of things and it's just such a nice um i did loads of stuff like that when i was engaged i just absolutely loved it you're not in that kind of wedding engaged world for all that long really you know um and so don't let this like shit all over your time being engaged basically make sure you get the most out of it and it might just be that these things are like kind of less in person but there's still loads of stuff going on yeah. um that you can kind of um get involved in and like you know and just different things to learn yeah and i think that's actually really important what you said is that you're actually only a fiance for a very small portion of your life um, and hopefully the plan is only once yeah, right yeah. that's the and plan then you're married for the rest of your life again yeah plan. so yeah. actually like if you are valuing this like if you have had to postpone your wedding until next year or until later on this year oh my god just go and buy everything fiance on it because this literally will only happen um like this one time um and it's a really you get to stay thing. in our world for longer. Yeah. Who would have the other you twenty four seven? Do you know? Um, so there's a wedding show in London called the Unwedding, and I think they're doing one in Leeds. Yeah. Um, and that got bumped back. So all the other wedding shows earlier on in the year have managed to go ahead, but theirs was supposed to be actually it was supposed to be this weekend, just gone. Um, and it's got bumped back to the first weekend of November. So for anybody who was supposed to get married this year, who is actually going to get married next year, then it's a, it's the one show, wedding show, that's going to be kind of out of season for all the other wedding shows. So it yeah. might be really nice. But the tickets are on sale now. So check out who's exhibiting and... Um, yeah, and get yourself tickets for those. Um, and even if you've already got your suppliers for the day that you've moved and everything's fine, again, just enjoy that process and just carry it on and just still be in that moment and still get ideas. Like, the ideas are endless and they're always yeah. developing. Um, and also, lots of venues now are looking at their showcase dates because they haven't been able to do show rounds. So everyone's kind of doing FaceTime or virtual tours or rough videos. So lots of venues now are planning their... Um, open days and showcases for like November time because they're going to have to show a lot of people around quite quickly um, so again speak to your venue because there may be suppliers there again just enjoy the process as much as you can yeah yeah um, oh you had a good one love about cocktails oh so um loads of oh, there's a few couples that I have and what they're doing um in their like down time home time is crafting like creating their own like you know how you can get like mrs and mrs cocktails or mr and mrs or kind of whatever you want and basically there's there's your choice and then there's your partner's choice of cocktail and the kind of bar signature drinks so people are, are spending this time like crafting their own um and you get to obviously chances are you probably know what your favorite cocktail is anyway but I am one of those people that, um, like, I go against all the rules and I cannot stick to the same drink for throughout the night because it makes me sick. So I have to kind of move around. So if this was me, I'd be like, right, I'm trying espresso uh, martinis. And then the next one I'd try would be, I don't know, something with ginger in it. Mm. Uh, but, yeah, just keep making them, keep trying them. You can obviously get the little samples of stuff from um supermarkets for like slightly more um exotic ingredients mm -hmm. but um but yeah no definitely get crafting like your um signature cocktails that you want your bar to offer um or mocktails yeah cocktails mocktails kind of I mean, like my alcohol storage here is quite low i was just saying how we don't really drink that much at home but i do drink a lot of juice yeah mocktails sorry, sorry. Yeah. Put <laughs> so, yeah. a bit of ginger in your apple juice. Ooh. Oh, good, you're rocking. Yeah. Ooh. I'm all about smoothies, me. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Every day for smoothie. Oh, God. Okay, I'm going to stop making myself sound like a dick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so 
all sit like creating all that stuff, which kind of leads me onto my big one that I'm really, really passionate about. And I really want to see loads of this. And we're going to talk more about this tomorrow um, in the Plants for Spain Facebook group. Um, but we really think you should be planning your Zoom wedding right now, like massively. And people do chat in the chat, by the way, like anything we're saying is resonating with you or you've got any questions or things that we're talking about are popping up or you want to know some of the supplies that we're talking about, just please put stuff in the chat. Um, so um, yeah, please, please plan your Zoom wedding. Like I didn't see any reason why the date of your original wedding, if you've had to postpone, should in any way not be celebrated. Like ever. What would you do about your dress? If you didn't have it, so you'd have to wear that. another one. But yeah. would you save it? I would save it if it was I'd me. I'd save my dress, maybe, mm -hmm. um, if I really, really, really love it. Or mm -hmm. I would just get another one if it's in next year, because, like... Mm -hmm. Oh, you know me, I'm always I'm always telling people to get other ones. <laughs> yeah. I did. I was, like, <laughs> five weeks before my wedding. Oh, hi, I need a new dress. Um, so... Um, please plan your Zoom wedding. So I've just done a big thing on this actually for um, an article in the press that's going out about kind of what to do and actually literally planning it. So you might um, you might be finding that you want to get ready with your bridal party in the morning via Zoom and have some Bucks Fizz and have breakfast and have a good old catch up and a good old chat in the morning and then set a time for the ceremony and have a mock ceremony, get your celebrant involved, you know, we're a big fan of those, um, get your celebrant involved or get a friend to lead it, do some readings, sing a song, like whatever you want and exchange your rings. Like your rings may be inscribed with the original date on, so I don't see any reason why you shouldn't put those rings on for that day. Um, and then cut some cake, have a good meal, get like a Marks and Spencer's ready meal, make it nice. <laughs> <laughs> love Mark and Spencer's um <laughs> like be proudy for the rest of the week and then enjoy some Marks and Spencer's for your original wedding day <laughs> yeah but get some cake cut your cake get someone to do a speech for you do a first dance have all your friends and family on zoom and plan that wedding and make sure it's special and record it and then you have got that as a memory forever and to me that is literally I'll play it at the wedding when you're all together yeah and I yeah. think honestly I really really want people to enjoy their original wedding day don't see it as a time to be down or not excited about it make it a reason to celebrate mm. get some balloons from Amazon get some fairy lights up in your home oh get some candles lit yeah yeah, yeah. so um yeah plan your zoom wedding <laughs> there you are that's, that's Sold it. One, right I'm really, honestly, I want to see Zoom weddings all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, literally before we came on, my friend forwarded me a, um, clip that they've been on, my friend and her kids have been on the news, because they got invited to a party, um, that they had to do via Zoom, so there's a, a woman who works local to us, and she, she dresses up, and kind of, you know, she'll be spies a woman, and then she'll be like Elsa at the next party or whatever. She's bought herself a green screen and is projecting all kinds of backgrounds on it, and all the kids are on Zoom, like on these virtual parties. Um, yeah, so it does work. If you get kids to do it, weddings will be easy. Right? Okay, so mm. now everyone has to get a green screen. <laughs> With your venue! You can do it on the back. Like you can do it on Zoom actually. I could do like yeah. a virtual background. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Please someone do this, please. Like and send it to <laughs> I'll just invite me. Like I'll just be chewing you <laughs> I want to see some Zoom wedding. Um so yeah, um what else? I'm just checking my list, sorry notes. Oh um probably the last one, but the big one from us on a personal note, I suppose. Um, is book your suppliers. So um, lots of people have been furloughed now or you're working from home and things are a bit easier for you. Um, yeah. If you have been putting off booking a supplier for your wedding, um, whether it's this year, next year, please do it. <laughs> because yeah. honestly, every inquiry that a wedding supplier gets right now um, is literally like gold. It is, it is like gold right now. It's 
it means so much to us that people are getting in touch and still wanting to plan. Um, and it means that if you have been holding off paying someone's deposit or anything along those lines, like you're literally going to be making the difference between putting the food on the table for their kids or not. And I don't mean to be dramatic about it, but that's the situation for nearly every wedding supplier right now. Mm. The income has stopped. Um, okay. Nobody's fault. So if you are thinking um, that you just haven't got around to paying their deposit or signing a contract or anything along those lines, um, if you've got a bit more time on your hands now and the funds are there, um, then please, please, please do um, book your wedding supplies. Mm. Yeah. yeah, no, that's a really important one. I've got a wedding that I'm planning at the end of September and we're still doing everything, like everything is as if, you know, and it's in Tuscany, so it would have to be, there's a bit more organisation if we could have to postpone it. Yeah, but um, but everything is still going ahead and all we've done is um just double check with suppliers what happens um if we need to postpone it kind of you know are there any charges and and you know um and that kind of thing um but yeah it's important to still um book yeah which kind of um just been asked another question of should we been asking in advance if they'd be happy to postpone i think Yes, obviously. Um, if your wedding is coming up in the next few months and you're still booking suppliers for it, then I think you should find out now what the postponement policy is if it's affected by um, COVID-19. Like, that's a sensible thing to do and it gives yeah. you some reassurance and some trust in them and any supplier should come back to you with a really clear answer as to what their plan is yeah. uh, and that can then inform your decision on booking them. Um, I don't think you're gonna, but at this stage, I don't think you're gonna freak anybody out by asking that question. Now, if somebody asked me that, I'd be like, "Oh, thank God, somebody's on the ball and is realizing like what's happening." You know, like where we are. It's a really sensible question to ask. So, I don't think we'd be kind of um, shocked if we got that. Yeah, I really had I had someone ask me today actually, um, and her wedding isn't until next year. Um, and she asked me what my situation is if, if they want to postpone the date and um, my situation like I'm really clear on it I have a very clear outline as to the fact that we will do our utmost um, to postpone the date for them and you know we'll work with our couples I always say this, but we're like so invested in your day <laughs> mm. yeah that's what I in fact I had the same question for a couple who they're getting married in April next year and they wanted to know what their venue um, if they they're all they're in the US and all their guests are in the US. Like nobody is, there's like three people who live in the UK. Um, so obviously there's a lot of travel involved. Um, venues, I would say they're, they're going to deal with it differently. So that will change. We will always be, all your little more independent suppliers, their policy is going to be their policy right the way through when they will try. Um, kind of whatever it is now, chances are in six, nine, 12 months it would still still be the same. I guess venues might have to change as um, more dates kind of get Yeah, moved. venues is a, a tricky one. Um, and change a little bit. They are changing and they are becoming a bit more savvy about what they have to do. Um, but generally on the whole, for your smaller, more independent suppliers, then yeah, they should have a good idea as to how they're going to work things when it comes to that. Um, so we can go on to questions. Um, but Again, just chat away, guys. If there's anything in the um, anything that you want us to answer, then just put them in the chat for us. Um, so let's stick with suppliers um, and booking suppliers for this year, which we kind of touched upon. Um, but this was a question that came up because somebody received quite a bad reaction um, from a supplier, um, and I was quite shocked um to <laughs> read it um i think the stance from our point of view is that you should definitely be booking your suppliers now whether your wedding is this year or next year because everyone's calendars are changing in a way that we've never seen before never experienced before and don't know exactly what the future is going to hold when it comes to our wedding dates so for example, um, <clears throat> occasion queens, our busiest month for inquiries is normally March. Guess how many inquiries I got? Two. <laughs> 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 yeah. 
true. Um, we normally have, well, this year we were meant to have 63 weddings this year. Um, so for my calendar to fill up that much for next year, it's obviously not going to be the same now because my busiest month for inquiries didn't happen. Um, so if you, like we said before, if you are reaching out to suppliers about booking them, um, then they should be really open to everything you do. And they're probably just going to be putting caveats in place to say, for example, for me, I'll be like, yes, we're going to take your booking. Yes, we're going to help you with your date. I just can't tell you right now who's going to be there on the day itself, but we'll support you throughout this process. And whoever it is will be amazing as always. <laughs> um, so yeah, so do book your suppliers now. Um, do ask all the right questions in terms of what their postponement policies are, what the cancellation policies are, double check your terms and conditions, speak to your insurance company and make sure that you feel comfortable with the situation. Um, but yeah, please do book your suppliers and make sure they're nice and positive suppliers who are invested in your wedding. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if they're not, there's plenty more out there that would happily work with you. <laughs> I think there's a, that it's uh, I think it's quite obvious there's a few people who aren't taking a breath before mm -hmm. they kind of um yeah respond and and the thing is like none of us know like when weddings will be able to start up again like none of us so there's no point speculating over like this the rest of this year at all because you know, nobody knows so it makes sense to carry on as normal and then the ones that have to get moved we all just move together there's no point somebody coming to me about a, an october wedding and me saying well i just don't think it's happening so i'm not going to take me i think our overall message for exactly. all of this has been make educated decisions mm. not decisions based on fear mm. and i think it's really important with every step you take when it comes to postponement that you're listening to what we're being told by the government um not by the press basically um and either and not, not by other people yeah they're like friends family um you know there's that many things going around isn't there and, and chances are not a lot of it is um it's true or will happen so yeah kind of stick to stick to the facts so Lauren's just popped in the um, chat, uh, end of August weddings, carry on planning. Um, Lauren, none of my August weddings have moved. They've all, everybody's is, is kind of sitting tight. So um, yeah, there's no, it, unless, the only thing to say is that unless you'll get married abroad or unless there is a lot of people, a lot of your guests who you wouldn't want to go ahead without who have to travel, especially from somewhere like America, um, which it looks kind of worse there than, than everywhere else. And so restrictions might be a bit different for them, but, um, but uh, yeah, just, just carry on. Doesn't it? In terms yeah. of looking at your VIP guest list. And if yeah. there's anyone in your VIP guest list who has to be there when you get married, who is yeah. on 12 week isolation, um, and isn't leaving for three months, leaving the house for three months, then fair enough, you should look into postponing. If, like Ashley said, everyone's coming from abroad and you know they're not going to be there, then again, you should look into postponing. If it's not one of those two things and your mm. wedding is in June onwards, like none of my June have moved yet. I've still got all my June weddings in place. Um, doesn't mean they're not going to be, but for now they're just holding on because there might be a chance they can go ahead. So they may as well hold on to that might. Um, I would still say that six weeks out is a good time to start looking to postpone. Anything else outside of that, um, to me, could be based more on fear um, mm. than an educated decision. It doesn't yeah. take long to postpone a wedding. Once you've got a new date, you can, new event, a day. you can do it in a day. Like we've done, I've done how many now and just literally like lightning quick because because suppliers want to know when to move to venues want to know when to move to so everybody's quite responsive yeah um it's getting it out to your guests i guess but yeah so so if you're thinking of moving um don't move too soon but see um yeah you've got to make a list of who you wouldn't do who has actually 
you know, you would cancel your wedding if they weren't there. And if your mum or your dad. Yeah. You know, like, party, um, that kind of thing. Um, and see, uh, we're not talking about like an old school for, I know like wedding guest lists, you kind of, you, obviously they're massively curated anyway, but we're not talking about like an old school friend. We're talking about immediate family, parents, siblings, best friends, wedding party, that kind of thing. Um, and uh, yeah, and if there's any restrictions on them, then it, it, you might want to think about it a little bit earlier. But other than that, there's no, you, yeah, you can literally change it in a day. So um, yeah, yeah it doesn't, um, doesn't take long, does it? Everybody's got it down to a fine art now as well. <laughs> All we'll the calendars. Yeah, no, the first few postponements, everyone was like, whoa, yeah. but now it, everybody has it down to a fine art. So um, yeah, so don't worry about it too much. Absolutely. And I think for, I know that the questions have started arising for couples who get married in like September or October. And just want to reiterate again that most people who have postponed their weddings have gone for like September, October, November dates. Yeah. Um, so yeah, please, please, please. Um, I know it's so hard. Like it's, they're probably all sitting there going, Ashley, this is so easy for you to say. You're not the ones getting married. <laughs> like you haven't just put your heart into the planning for 18 months and now you don't know what to do and you want to make sure it's for the best and all of those kind of things. And I get that. I really get how hard this is. Um, it's not fun. Like we're not saying that this is fun or this is easy. What we're saying is that you need to give yourself some time because there is a chance that your dream wedding will still go ahead on that day and that wedding deserves that chance. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I'm not trying to say it's easy. Please don't. Like that would be no, 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 no. It's not. It is a, a massive. It's a massive decision to um, to yeah. to move it. And this is just this is just crap for everybody, isn't it? It's just cr such a crap situation you know um with everything that's going on but it's um you've got to make the best decision for you both and, and for your immediate families really so definitely talk to them about it so the the list of people who are like on your vip list talk to them about it and see what they think and they get their opinion these are the kind of things that you need to talk out if you just make a decision yourself like you need to get it off your chest and kind of bounce ideas back and forth because chances are somebody will give you um like a point of view that maybe you you hadn't thought about so yeah. um yeah so talk but it out if you have decided that you need to postpone or you're kind of trying to gauge what your suppliers are going to do or anything like that someone's asked um how to word an email to suppliers about postponing maybe we should put up a template in the group yeah absolutely um, so um is it a book supplier um so it's book suppliers so their wedding's in august and they're thinking yeah going back um but they want to just gauge from suppliers what the situation is with them so it's just kind of i think when you're approaching suppliers the best way of approaching them and saying we're thinking of postponing what's the deal guys you could literally say that <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah ask them so where i've seen it go wrong is where a couple have got in touch with a supplier and said um we're postponing uh we want a full refund um or we're cancelling we want a full refund we're cancelling we want our money back and then because if I, if I just went up to somebody in the street and said, give me that money back that I just paid you, you'd automatically be like, what? And, and then, and so people are getting kind of, it gets quite argumentative quite quickly. Um, and vice versa, suppliers have been like that with couples and then got a kind of a bit of an aggressive reaction back. Um, so what you want to do is kind of work around all of that and just ask them questions. How does it work? Can we move? Is it for free? Is there a fee incurred? And then if there is, and you don't think that fee is maybe justified, then go back and ask them why they have that fee. Because once they've explained it to you, this is where the problem is happening, is that if somebody explains why a fee, why there's a fee for something, you're like, all oh, right, okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. Or maybe it does make sense, depends what it is. 
but at least you've got an understanding of why you might be charged or why you're not being charged because we want to try and accommodate as many um as many kind of postponements as we as we can but it's all about asking questions asking lots of questions and then you've got all the information that you need then to make um like an informed decision on, on what you want to do um yeah i think it's not get it aggressive yeah about keeping conversation open positive um and make it a conversation so you might feel with some of your suppliers that you're more comfortable just to give them a call um and speak to them but then just follow up in an email anything that was discussed so you've got it in black and white still um, don't feel that it has to be an email just make sure you do follow it up afterwards but yeah I would just keep the conversation really light and ask them what their postponement policy is so you're and just so that you're just gathering information at the moment because you're not sure what your plan is going to be but you just want to be educated as and when you feel you have to make that decision yeah there's nothing wrong with that um, yeah and if, I, I think it might be better to give them a call first because what what has happened, which I've seen happen, is you've obviously got lots of questions and then the supplier answers it in an email and then you've got more questions because you want to understand what that answer is and sometimes, it, like, it's just quicker, isn't it? It's just quicker on, on the phone. But like Nina says, you've got to follow it up so you've got it in. Yeah, it's it in I think if you're just outlining what their situation is um, and that it's the initial thoughts, then just keep it very light, very open and lots of questions as Ashley said. Um, if at any point you're feeling that actually the communication isn't going well, um, make sure you know what the T's and C's are. Um, and if it's not going that well, always get a moderator in. That's where it's good to like get one yeah. of us to do it um, or something along those lines where um, we take the emotion away. And this is something I'm quite big on is making sure that when you're contacting these suppliers, um, you draw on the right emotions and not mm. the fear um, and the defensive and the, the emotions that lead to be being defensive. Um, mm. If that is playing a massive part, then do step away and get someone else um, to step in and start negotiating that that isn't, you know, when it's not, it's not our money, um, we're investing in your day and wanting to make it work for you, but we're making sure that it's done in the right way. So yeah, mm. so if you can, if you think it's getting a bit tricky, then emotions are not the one. No. Yeah, you've got to try and remove um, remove yourself from it. And, and chances are it will never get to some... If it's approached in the right way from either end, it will never get there. It's just when things are... Obviously, both couples and suppliers are um, feeling the stress right now. Um, so, uh, yeah, just just um and always keep that in your mind yeah that's actually happened with a few of the couples that i've been speaking to um suppliers may not have reacted the way that you would have thought they would react and actually when i've chairman and said to them this has come from a place of fear that's all mm. that is. that's why they've reacted that way is because wedding suppliers are scared right now so mm. take it the pinch of salt give them the benefit of the doubt and try again um mm. And that generally seems to help. Um, we've had one comment saying that um, this lovely bride is a self-confessed contro self control freak. I have a very organized schedule for the wedding and because of the lockdown, things aren't happening when planned. Honestly, it's breaking me. Um, for instance, dress fitting and menu tasting, hair and makeup trials, scared about leaving it until the last minute. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean to be fair, if it, if it does run to the last minute, your suppliers will be there ready and waiting to make all that happen last minute. So I wouldn't stress too much about um, there is nothing as constant as change, and um, weddings do go a little bit like that, coronavirus or not. <laughs> things do. Our wedding day is is a prime example of things not always going to plan um but but yeah your suppliers will be there ready and waiting to kind of get all that sorted for yeah. you it still happen that's the thing i think that's really important to, to talk about here is there's two things one is that this hope maybe is the, the first time that you've got married so all of this is new to you you've got it in your head in a set way with your wedding suppliers 
this won't be the first time by any means from I hope 99% of them probably um, that they've been through this process of someone getting married so for example I could easily plan a whole wedding in a day like less than a day um, it would not take me long at all to plan a whole wedding from start to finish with getting the stationery out there and everything else because we know how to do it we know where to go for the right tools we're not having to research we're not having to do this so if you are finding that actually the things that you had in place on certain dates are not happening when they are i promise you that it's okay because your suppliers will as ashley said will be right there and know exactly what to do to make things happen and work for you and if you've got the right suppliers on board honestly they will bend over backwards to make sure that your wedding happens for you yeah, so def definitely lean on them because this is where all of us we um are kind of getting a few i'd say curveballs we're getting questions we don't usually get asked um and everybody as nina says is trying to step up to the plate to make those things happen so definitely lean on them that's what they're that's what they're there for and they can guide you and like um nina just said weddings are major major life events chances are you only do it once um so it is um everything does feel very uncertain even without coronavirus planning a wedding if when you've never done it before it does feel very uncertain because you're never quite sure what's coming next because you haven't done it before so um yeah so this is where your um suppliers come in and try not to let it stress you out too much that is going to be an element which i know oh, for control freaks this is hard of a bit go with the flow because nobody knows kind of um no kind of when when weddings can, can can start again at the moment but um but yeah don't don't think that you're supposed to have all the answers and don't think that okay this is how isn't happening on this date so it's going to happen on this day you're not supposed to know that and that's okay that you don't know that and it's okay that you're getting stressed about it um and this is where your suppliers come in and kind of can say to you don't worry you know we can get this sorted in four days five days kind yeah. of however long before you before your wedding so yeah you've hired experts for a reason so let them be the experts them. yeah mm -hmm. um let them be the experts and let them take control of that a little bit i know that's hard it's really hard um when um i got married four days before i ended up in hospital and there was a point where i thought i was gonna have to cancel my whole wedding and I was really ill, even though my wedding went ahead and I came out of hospital and all was fine, I was still really ill in the late days leading up to my wedding. And I had so many to do jobs, like creative kind of like, I did hangover kits for my guests that were staying in the hotel. So I had to like pack all of those up and write all the names on and get them to the hotel beforehand, all this stuff. And the amount of people that step up and step in at that point is unbelievable. Um, mm and i had two friends who came over one lived an hour away so it really people will be there for you um and you just have to allow that process to happen i think is, is probably the best way of putting it um although that's really hard so out of all the questions i think we've gone through nearly everything um there was just one thing that came up that we're just going to quickly reiterate but best to go back to our youtube channel um and watch the live um from last sunday or the week on sunday um and that is ceremonies so this is still coming up as something that people are concerned about which we completely understand if you can't get hold of your registrar um and oh yeah we've just had a, a priest know. or reverend yeah. or vicar any other uh, rai, any other religious ceremony. So this is religious or civil yeah. ceremony. So legal ceremonies, basically. So um, if there is anything, and someone's literally just said, oh, what's this about registrars? Um, if you are on the process of trying to either postpone, cancel, or book any type of ceremony with someone that you A, can't get hold of, please email them, don't ring them um no one's in their offices right now so phone calls are really hard to reply to email them put your phone number in that email and get them to call you from home um and in the subject heading put postponement or cancellation or whatever it is that you're doing 
and you're trying to get hold of them for. So they can then obviously prioritize the right ones, put your wedding date in as well. Be mindful that these people are reacting to a huge volume, way greater than, than anything that, that we Did you say it was like 250, Essex had like 250 ceremonies, that was just April, right? It wasn't just April, I think it was like two weeks, they had 280 ceremonies. 280. April, oh my god, imagine how many they've got, like June. Exactly. May, June, yeah, yeah. This is yeah. really hard. Yeah. 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 So, email, don't try and call them, put in what you're doing and your date in the subject heading, um, and make sure you put your number in the email for them to call you because they'll be working from home. So that's, that's that thing. If, however, this all seems to be falling apart because you can't get hold of them and you can't give notice or you can't do your bands or anything on those lines, please, 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 please don't worry. Um, our big thing is all about making sure you still have a ceremony that is beautiful. And that can be through a celebrant. It could be for a friend. It could be for a family member. It could be your local priest coming and doing a blessing or your rabbi or whoever coming and doing a blessing at your venue. Um, it doesn't have to be a legal ceremony on your wedding day. So using a celebrant, and please go back and have a look at the YouTube channel because obviously yeah. the live is brilliant. Because chances are this is going to be, weddings will be able to be restarted, but chances are this is going to be the issue because there is the volume that of weddings that are legally binding, so civil with a registrar or religious, um, are just so big that their backlog's going to be massive. Um, and there's a few kind of pockets around the country where they have said um, they aren't going to do any weddings until like August, September. So chances are, if we can get started on weddings throughout the summer, so this is what I've said to a few of my August brides, that there's, all of my August weddings are still going ahead, but that's what I've said, is that that might be the issue. So how do you feel? feel about having like a symbolic ceremony instead where you either get celebrant or friend or family or somebody to conduct it um and they've all been like yeah that's absolutely fine that's what we that's what we've chatted about and that's kind of what we want so um so that would probably be the thing to be prepped for yeah i think a lot of people now are realizing that actually there's a better alternative yeah. um, to a legal ceremony and they are and nicer <laughs> way more personal way more way fun more personal. want it to be fun way more just oh so emotional there's not a dry eye in the house oh. um so do look at that go back have a look at the youtube video but please 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 yeah. don't feel that you have to cancel your whole wedding because of a registrar doesn't have to happen like that no 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 um, just do the legal stuff it's 49 quid on another day like i know you pay like a hundreds for them to turn up on an actual wedding day but if you just go down there it's 49 quid you just sign a, sign a bit sign a form and then um yeah. yeah yeah um so we've got one more question from chloe thinking of removing any mention of gifts or gift lists from the invite based on the fact that this year is such a shit show for most people with pay cuts and job losses what are your thoughts i think chloe you're lovely um, yeah, I think that's really thoughtful. I would say good luck because people put that kind of stuff on invites all the time and you still end up inundated with gifts. So, um, yeah. I think, yeah. You could, you, could, you could do what you wanted, really, but I think people will still want to give you a gift whenever that is. Um, it might not be right away, but you... Um, Depends what you wanted. A lot of people ask for money nowadays or suggest money. Um, so, yeah. I mean, um, maybe another way of doing it, Chloe, that actually um, wouldn't, like, so we know that whenever people say, can we have money, they're still going to get some gifts. We all know when people say we don't want anything, they're still going to get something. Yeah, yeah you're still getting in days. Around. Yeah. So maybe actually what you could do is say, we really don't want gifts, but actually what we would like is some donations to the NHS um, because of what happened with our original date and we've had to postpone, we feel very strongly about this. Um, and I can guarantee that probably everybody um, right now, especially with the situation that we're all in and how we're valuing our key workers and our NHS workers, um, I am sure that people would probably um, be yeah. more happy. You could also do that instead of favours, like do donations, like a few pounds per head um, to wherever. Um, 
some something that's just come to me a lot of places like um patchwork oh so what's really popular now is for people to pay for your guests to to all contribute financially and then you pay for your honeymoon with that or you pay for some kind of experience because chances are we all live together now we don't need like pots and pans and physical stuff um, so what you could do is, um, is is just still go ahead with whatever your plans were but then kind of make it obvious that there's going to be a, an extended period of time after your wedding when that will still be open um, maybe if people can't um, financially contribute on whatever um, yeah. on your specific Does that make wedding sense? Maybe for your wedding yeah like I'll be very honest in the fact that my income is halted right now um, but as soon as wedding season kicks off again, then it would be fine. Um, yeah. So yeah, absolutely. It might be actually, let's just postpone having the gift list or, or, li or just keep it going for a little while longer. And those things are great. <laughs> Hand on heart, I got married four years ago and I still had 200 quid in my gift list um, the last week and they happened to be mummy and remind me. <laughs> what was your gift list for? Um, so it was in the wedding shop. Um. <laughs> See, that's why I didn't do one of that. We did for our honeymoon and we spent everything. Yeah. Because we had that money and it was always going to go towards our honeymoon. So we were like, let's just. This was because um, some people had done a gift voucher, which I didn't realise they could do. So they had a gift voucher to spend with uh, the uh, So I just bought myself a coffee table. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't know when it's going to arrive, but yeah. Um, <laughs> so whatever money they do, uh, apparently it never goes away. Um, so yeah, so that would be my thing, is I would think if you could either put it towards a worthy cause or maybe just say, look, we're not expecting anything now. If you do really feel like you want to give us something, we're happy to hold on until things settle down. Um, but yeah. I think, Chloe, that's just really lovely of you to be thinking of your guests. Yeah, it is really nice. And I'm, I think, you know, um, it's not just the gifts that, that guests have to kind of pay out for when they um, attend a wedding. But the thought is, um, the thought's really nice. Yeah. So, yeah. Really lovely. Yeah. Well, unless anyone's going to be super quick and tired for questioning, um, that's all the ones that were pre-sent as well. I think we've waffled quite a bit. Mm. Oh, we've been on an hour. Yeah. <laughs> Time flies, thank you, myself. Um, oh. You are welcome, Abby. Guys, I hope this was useful. Oh, welcome. <laughs> Um, it will be on the YouTube channel tomorrow and if there's anything else you want to know, anything that you think would be helpful to do a live on, please, please, please tell us. Yeah. Um, like we are here to help. So yeah. Cool. Oh. Uh, you guys are welcome. Um, yeah, I think that's it. No panic. No, no. no. Like is the main, is the main thing. We're, yeah we're all in it together so we will all move if we have to we will all move together um but yeah just don't don't i think the biggest thing for this one is please don't let it like ruin the time the short period of time that you're engaged like don't i know this is we all have to acknowledge this is happening there's absolutely nothing we can do about it but um but yeah please stay in the like the little wedding bubble of being excited i know it feels like an extra drag right now being in the wedding bubble because you're dealing with this whilst you're planning but it is such a lovely place to be so it's um, gonna happen once i wish that uh, i had valued that time more yeah yeah because you're gonna look back on it like you want to look back on it and go god that was wild like we had to do this and we had to do this but like wasn't it fun we still did this workshop and we learned how to do this we learned, as opposed to like in a year's time or two years time looking back on the time you were engaged and thinking god that was so stressful um you know try and wanna eke the most out of it that you can whilst whilst you're here yeah well enjoy your planning guys keep us in the loop as how you're getting on put it in the facebook group um we want to hear some lovely positive stories and we want to hear the good stuff as well as the more stressful stuff and we'll be yeah here. yeah cool and if well, you need any tips on um exciting workshops yeah. and bits and pieces to do let us know because we can share some bits and yeah, pieces definitely cool 
Enjoy the rest of your night, guys. Off to watch the rest of Tiger King. Oh, Find phenomenal. out what happens to Carol Baskin. <laughs> I'm on season four of Game of Thrones. Oh. Mm -hmm. kind of You've got a long way to go, love. <laughs> <laughs> right. Bye. Bye. Bye.